welcome to Children's Church at Second City Church. I'm Ms. Cherise, and today I'm going to be sharing some scripture with you. But first, we're going to start with prayer. Let's bow our head and close our eyes as we prepare to talk to the Lord. Dear God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for this moment we have to hear your scripture. We pray that we can learn something new and that you help us to live lives that are pleasing to you. Amen. So today I'm going to read from Psalm 100. The book of Psalms is found in the Old Testament. And we'll begin with verse 1, reading from the International Children's Bible Version. Shout to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with joy. Come before him with singing. Know that the Lord is God. He made us and we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep he tends. Come into his city with songs of thanksgiving. Come into his courtyards with songs of praise. Thank him and praise his name. The Lord is good. His love continues forever. His loyalty continues from now on. So that was Psalm 100. And in that verse, it's talking about how good God is because he is so good. He does so many great things for us. He loves us. He protects us. Like a shepherd, he takes care of us the way a shepherd takes care of his sheep. And because of that, we should give God praise. We can praise him with the words we say. We can praise him by clapping, by singing, by dancing. There are so many ways to praise God. And we just have to remember how he loves us and all the great things that he does and how good he is. So remember, you can praise God in so many different ways and for so many different reasons. He loves us and he deserves our praise. So let's pray right now. Let's bow our head, close our eyes. Dear Lord, we thank you for being such a great Heavenly Father. We thank you that you are so good and you are so holy and that you take care of us and protect us, Lord. We want to praise you with how we speak, with how we live, Lord. Please show us ways we can praise you, Lord, each and every day. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Hi everyone, it's Brittany, and today we're going to do a sing-along. We're going to sing Jesus Loves Me, so I hope you sing along with me. We're going to sing three verses, so let's go ahead and get started. Jesus loves me this I Second verse, Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gates to open wide, he will wash away my sin, let his little child come in, yes, Jesus loves me, and you, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, this I know, as he loved so long ago, taking children on his knee, saying, let them come to me. Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. Thank you everyone for singing along with me to Jesus Loves Me. I hope you all really enjoyed that. And remember, Jesus loves you and Second City loves you. Hope you all have a great Sunday. Bye. This song is called This Little Light of Mine.
This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no. I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no. I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine, kids. This song is called, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. One, two, three. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus?
All right, hi, this is Roland Fisher, lead pastor of Second City Church, and we hope that you're well. Welcome to our online service. We hope you leave today encouraged, full of faith, and ready to take the kingdom of God wherever you may go. Before we get started today, let's consider this our lobby moment where we have an opportunity to get to know one another. If you would, please share your name and maybe from where you might be worshiping with us. In just a moment here, you'll see a countdown letting us know that worship is about to begin, and you can prepare your heart during that time. But we just wanted you to know that we're so glad that you've chosen to join us today. And once again, welcome. Second City Church, come worship with us.
Yes, Lord, we just sing hallelujah to you. This morning and every morning, you are worthy to be praised, Lord. So we come before you offering up our worship and praise to you that you would be glorified in our worship of you, Lord. We pray that you'd find joy in us just as we find joy in you, joy in your love, Lord. More than the air I breathe, more than the 
Welcome to Second City Church. I'm Sarah Baker, campus missionary at Second City, and I'm so glad you're here with us today. Before I get started, please take a moment to prayerfully invite someone to church and share this good news. Share this link and also check us out on YouTube. Throughout today's message, click the request prayer button and we would be honored to stand with you in prayer in a private chat thread. Prayer counselors are standing by now. At Second City Church, our vision is Christ, community, and culture. We are here to worship the living God, Jesus Christ, share life together in community, and be empowered to impact our culture by bringing the kingdom of God in every sphere of influence. Here are some ways to practically get connected. At the end of today's message, you'll see an opportunity in the chat box to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior for your life today. Click the link so we can get connected with you and help you get started in this amazing new life with Jesus. You can join a community group by going to our website. Join a group to get connected with others and practically apply God's word in our lives. Navigate over to secondcitychurch.com and click the culture tab to find all the ways to engage our culture with the good news of Jesus and bring God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Baby dedication class is May 16th. Judges 13.8 says, Then Manoah prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, please let the man of God whom you sent come again to us and teach us what we are to do with a child who will be born. If you would like to learn what it means to dedicate your child to the Lord, please join the Baby Dedication Group on Church Center or contact Pastor Cole to join this special event. And Repentance and Healing Prayer is coming up Friday, May 21st at 7 p.m. Leadership 215 is starting June 9th through August 25th, Wednesdays from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Leadership 215 is an ongoing course developed and taught by every nation leaders from around the world to help establish theological foundations for anyone who wants to minister the gospel and be an ambassador for Jesus in any sphere of influence. The first course this summer is on leadership. For those wanting to grow in leadership development, this is your ongoing outlet for personal growth taught by seasoned ministry leaders from around our worldwide ministry community. And Madison, Wisconsin summer missions trip is coming July 30th and 31st. Answer God's call in Acts 1-8 to go and be his witness to our neighboring region and to the end of the earth. Sign up on Church Center or go to our website if you would like more information. Now let's continue our time of worship through tithes and offerings. 1 Kings 18:36 says, And at the time of the offering of the oblation, Elijah the prophet came near and said, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and that I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. 
As Elijah put his trust in the Lord's provision and power, we also bring our tithes and offerings to the same God who promises to fight for the good of the nations as we serve and obey him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for your steadfast love and your faithful promises. Jesus, help us serve and obey you, God, all the days of our lives, for we know, God, you have plans to prosper us and not to harm us, to give us a hope in the future, not only for ourselves, but God, to the ends of the earth. In your precious name, amen. Now, we'll have a message. Hello everybody, welcome to Second City Church. My name is Cole, I'm associate pastor here at the church. Um, and I'm so excited to talk to you guys today, the Sunday after uh, Mother's Day. Um, and we're gonna dive into the scripture today of Luke 24. And we're gonna be talking about why do we look for the living, which is Jesus, among the dead, going to the tombs of our lives. So the title of today's message is why do we look for the living among the dead? So let's pray before we get started. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together, Lord, uh, even if it's not in person yet. Uh, we thank you for your word that we may know you. Uh, and we thank you for your word as a sign to the living one, to your son, Jesus Christ. And we say you are welcome here. We invite you to minister to us today as we look into your word together. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, guys, so we're going to go to Luke 24, and we're going to look at the resurrection, the road, and the return. The resurrection, the road, the return. So go ahead, uh, turn with me in your Bibles if you have them. All right, Luke 24, verses 1 through 35. But on the first day of the week at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them as an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home marveling at what had happened. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened while they were talking and discussing together. Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered them, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened here in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty indeed in word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O oh foolish ones, O oh slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road? while he opened to us the scriptures. 
And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. Okay, guys. Well, that's Luke 24. And I encourage you to go back, read it, meditate on it. Be that cow with the multiple stomachs where you chew it over and over and over because the truth is that the Word of God is living and it's active. It's eternal. Every time we go to it, we get something out of it. So we're not going to cover everything that could possibly be covered through this scripture today. But what I feel like God was highlighting for us at Second City Church as a part of the larger family of God around the world there's a couple of things he wants us to focus on. So in the section where we see the resurrection, the empty tomb, uh, what I felt like the Lord wanted to say to us is that life is too short and eternity is too long to look for the living among the dead. So like the, like the women who came to the tomb, they were mourning the crucified Jesus. We too should mourn the results of sin in our lives and the lives of others by going to the tombs made for that which was lost. And so this is a part of true repentance. A lot of times we think that, oh, if we're living by faith, uh, we forget about the hardships, right? We forget about mourning altogether. But the truth is, is that the only thing that pleases God is faith. But faith has to start with a recognition that we have been separated from God that the reason that there was a crucifixion was because there was sin and sin had to be paid for. And so, like the women who were following Jesus that showed up at the tomb mourning, we too need to be okay with mourning sin and the results of sin in our own lives and of those around us because that is not the way that God intended it for it to be. But because it was that way, sin in our lives and sin in other people's lives, the sinful world, there had to be a crucifixion. Now, we weren't there for the crucifixion, but we see the results of sin in our own lives through um, self-hatred, through broken relationships, uh, through sickness and disease even that sin has brought on, either because of our own choices or just the state of the fallen world that now has sickness in it at all. We need to be able to recognize the effects of sin and mourn them so that we can move forward with God. And this is part of true repentance. And secondly, like the women who came and they were mourning, they brought prepared spices and ointments to, uh, uh, to, to help with the, uh, uh, the decomposing process of the body in order to honor the body. They wanted to help make the best of a terrible situation, which was the crucifixion. Of course, not realizing the resurrection, but we too should be willing, like they were, to make amends and bring comfort to those that we've sinned against. We should be willing to make restitution for the wrongs that we've done and also for those around us as well um, when we're a part of a, a body or an institution or organization that has done sinful things. Uh, so that is restitution and that's also a part of the true repentance process. We should be willing to do that. But the good news is that the gospel, which is the good news, does not stop at the crucifixion and the empty tomb. The crucifixion was just the beginning. The empty tomb was the valley. And then the resurrection is the ascent to the mountaintop. And so it doesn't stop there. This is where the truth actually, meaning the truth of the resurrection, just like they encountered the empty tomb, and then they were perplexed. They were like, oh my gosh, what does this mean? Has the body been stolen? We can't even make things right now. We can't use our uh, restitution, our spices, our ointments. We, we can never make this a better situation. Um, but if there is a resurrection, which our minds readily do not want to go to, if there's a risen one where there should be a dead one, it is hard for us to take that in because it's not logical. It's not our normal everyday experience. And because of that, we need heaven to intervene. We need God to speak to us to actually reveal the resurrected Christ to us. So what we see here is that they show up, 
right? They're perplexed. And then God sends two, as Hebrews uh, calls them, uh, ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who are, who are to inherit salvation. That's Hebrews 1.14. He sends two angels to ask them a thought-provoking question. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Why are you looking for him? Don't you know that he's resurrected? Because remember, they were walking with Jesus this entire time. They heard his prophecies that the, the Son of Man must uh, be crucified and must resurrect on the third day. But in their mourning process, in their guilt, in their hurt, in their pain, they were not able to acknowledge what even the Lord himself had said that there would be a resurrection. So praise God with me today that he sends his Holy Spirit to witness to our heart, right? And then he also sends people and angels to help us get along to that place to where we can receive the good news of the resurrection. And so uh, one of the questions I felt like God was asking me as I was preparing for this is, Cole, why do you seek the one that you know about, the living Jesus, the Savior of the world, the King of kings and the Lord of lords forevermore? Why do you seek the living among the dead? Because you've walked with him just like the women had. And so I feel like what the Lord was saying to me is that even after we come to faith in Jesus Christ as the Savior of the world, and we surrender our lives to Him, the reason we go back to these empty tombs is because we forget. We forget His promises. And therefore, like Peter says, we become short-sighted, right? Or, excuse me, nearsighted. I've got thick enough glasses, I should know these terms. Uh, nearsighted, and we forget that we've been cleansed of our former sins. We forget the promises that He's made. Um, so some of the places that we tend to go to, these I'll call them empty tombs where we expect to find Jesus, but yet we're disappointed. Um, if we forgot that there's a resurrection and a redemption of these things, is we end up going to religion, thinking that if we are just good enough and we do enough and we obey enough, that we can have life. We can have a restored relationship with God. But the truth is, is that the law can never be fulfilled and never was fulfilled by any human being. You won't do it, I won't do it. So why do we keep going back here and trying to just live the, our best life now, trying to be the best person we can be? Um, not to say we shouldn't try to please God, but there's a difference between relationship and religion. But that's one of the ones that I go to. And then also, I tend to neglect the church of God by thinking I will find the living one, Jesus, outside of the place he said he would be, which was in his gathered church. And so before I was saved, um, and many people, other people I know, we would go to all these places like the clubs, for example, right, where we would try to find the, the living one that our empty hearts are going uh, for. Um, I'm, I'm terrible at going to the empty tomb of people pleasing, just trying to make people happy, right? Thinking that if they're happy, then God will be pleased with me as well. Well, that's not, that's not the truth because uh, our first priority is to bring glory to God and to love Him and to obey Him. And out of that overflow, we love people the way that God has loved them, not always the way that they want to be loved or that they want to be pleased. So I fall into that. And then also a lot of us, we turn to romantic relationships, thinking that we're going to find the living one if we can just have the best romantic relationship. For some of us, uh, this used to be me when we're single. We think if we can just get married, right, we're going to have uh, the fulfillment that only Jesus can give us. And it's, it's not true. I'm married now. It's a great blessing. Love my wife. You know, we had our first kid. There's a lot of fulfillment there. But the problem is that the expectations that my heart has that are legitimate expectations of what it means to be right with God will never be fulfilled by that relationship. And if I place those expectations on that marriage relationship or romantic relationship, um, it will actually crush that relationship and it will become uh, an empty tomb, right? Success at work. All right, so of you guys know my story about filing bankruptcy back when I was 25 years old. Well, that empty tomb was shown to be empty <laughs> uh, after seven years of, uh, of, of trying to find uh, Jesus in that empty tomb. He's, uh, he wasn't there. And then after the pandemic, I already see it. 
we're all prone to it, more security. We're gonna to try to insulate ourselves, right? And think that, okay, if I can just do everything right, uh, have enough money in the bank, um, if I can uh, just you know, protect myself, then I'll, 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 I'll feel better, I'll have that place in my heart filled, and it's just not true. Uh, when we realize these tombs are empty, we also realize our hearts are empty like we were talking about. But only when we experience this kind of disappointment is there actually room in our hearts for the Holy Spirit to actually reveal the resurrected Christ to us. And that's the redeeming thing about coming to an empty tomb in any of these areas. God uses that to actually reveal Christ to us. Um, so why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you. And so that's quoting the scripture that we just read. They remembered the prophecy that Jesus said this would happen. And then, only then, did they return to the gathering of believers and to witness to the church that was forming. And so this is a crucial point for us. When Jesus has been revealed to us as the resurrected Lord and we encounter him, he always wants us to go be a witness to those who are struggling, who need that encouragement, and also to those who don't know him yet as well. So we see that it actually led that encounter, right, of realizing that Jesus is alive, led them to go back and to tell others. Now, life is too short and eternity is too long to not investigate the empty tomb, to see, is it really empty? Did this Jesus actually rise from the dead? And so what we saw was we saw Peter run back to that tomb after hearing the testimony from the women. Now, not everybody went there. It was only Peter and one other disciple, right? And there were about 120, uh, they say, that were gathered together. And so will you be the one to go investigate that empty tomb? I hope so. Life is too short and eternity too long to not know if God has made a way for you to be with him forever through the resurrected Christ. And then I love how the scripture says that after Peter went and saw with his own eyes that the tomb was empty, he marveled all the way home thinking, oh, maybe it is true. And then we find out later that Jesus actually did go track him down and reveal himself to him and bring him back into the church. But now we're going to turn to the second point, and that is the road to Emmaus. Now, on the road to Emmaus, we find two disciples. Uh, one was named Cleopas, the other one we don't know their name. So we don't know if it was two men or if it was a man and a woman. It could have been uh, a husband and a wife. Uh, they were most likely in Jerusalem celebrating the Passover. They saw all the wonderful things Jesus did. They saw the terrible uh, crucifixion. Uh, and apparently they were with the 120 because they knew about them coming back, the women coming back and saying they saw the empty tomb and that angels had appeared to them. And so what's really interesting in here is that they were talking about all these things that have happened. And while they were discussing these things, so my question for you people, God, are you discussing the things of God on a regular basis? Are you talking about them, working them out? Because it says, and then Jesus drew near as they were on their road to Emmaus away from Jerusalem, right? So they were going in the wrong direction, <laughs> but Jesus still drew near as they were talking about them, but they didn't recognize him. Jesus is around us, right, by His Spirit today, talking to us, ministering to us by His Spirit, and we don't always recognize Him. Jesus asked them, what happened? What things? And guys, Jesus is the leader, as uh, the master of leading questions. And I want to encourage you, a lot of times when I have questions and I'm talking to God, He doesn't give me a direct answer. He actually asks me a question. And then I start to think about things that, is the answer that he has for me. So don't be disheartened when you don't get direct answers. Listen for the Holy Spirit so that uh, you can know what questions he wants you to ask, okay? And so what's really cool here is that they were talking with Jesus and they didn't know that they were talking to Jesus. So sometimes we don't know who we're talking to. Jesus could be talking to us through a preacher. He could be talking to us through a friend. He could be talking to us, of course, through his word, right? Which is the most uh, direct way and clear way that he talks to us. But the question is, are you coming back to Jesus uh, in prayer with the things that are being said to you? And now what's really cool is when, uh, uh, when he was walking with them, their hearts burned. 
They burned, even though they did not know they were talking to Jesus. The truth of the scripture that he was revealing to them, opening their minds, the result was a burning heart. And so guys, when you come to truth, you will have a burning heart. And if it really is truth, eventually Jesus will be revealed in it. So do what they did. Say, hey, come spend more time with us. Invite the truth in. Go deeper into the truth, right? And so Jesus said, okay, I'll stay with you guys. I'll eat dinner. And what we see here is they went to the next level of intimacy, right? It says that they prepared a meal and Jesus blessed the bread. He broke the bread and their eyes were opened. Guys, this is synonymous with communion, right? Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me on the night before he was crucified when he was sharing the Passover with them. And so as he did that, their eyes were opened, he vanished, and then they realized who Jesus was. Now here's the cool thing, the return. And this is another thing Jesus has for us right now in this moment. He wants all of us who are dismayed, who have been approaching empty tombs, who have been wandering, he wants us to return back to the church because the church is where he is found. And so they rose the same hour that they recognized Jesus and they returned to the community of worshipers. It was late at night. They were getting ready to like pack it up, go to bed, and just start again the next day going to their destination. But instead, they encountered Jesus. Their eyes were opened. Their whole direction in life changed and they immediately went to go. They changed opposite directions and left that night in the dark and went to go be with the people of God again. So friends, I want to encourage you, come back to church. Come back to the people of God. No matter whatever habits you've gotten into uh, during this pandemic or whatever else has just gotten in the way of making devotion to God with the people of God a priority in your life, Jesus is calling you back today. Um, Psalm 84 says, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars. O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. Come back to the house of God and be blessed singing his praise. Selah, blessed are those whose strength is in you and in whose heart are the highways to Zion. So blessed are those who are always looking for the opportunity to come back together with the people of God. They have a highway in their heart that is well traveled that they know to come back to the people of God, to the house of God, and they'll be blessed for it. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a, which means the valley of weeping. They make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. So, so guys, it may be a hard trek to get back to the people of God, to come back together in worship, but he promises that as you go through it, the trials, carrying your cross, right? Being a disciple of Jesus, doing the things that he says to do, like coming together in worship, He's going to turn that hardship into a blessing, whatever the hardship is in your situation to get there. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Selah, behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God, then dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor, and no good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in you. And a couple of other scriptures that just remind us how important it is to be, to return back to the community of worshipers right here. Matthew 18, 18 through 20 says, um, truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth, you shall, shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you, this is Jesus talking, if you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. So Jesus is present where the community of worshipers are gathered together. So he wants us to come back together. 
And then 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So when we come together, Jesus is there, the Spirit of the Lord is there, and there is freedom. And the last thing, guys, I'll read is a wonderful quote by C.S. Lewis from Mere Christianity. He says, We all want progress, but progress means getting nearer to the place where you want to be. And so I'll ask you, where do you want to be? Do you want to be with the risen one? Do you want to be with his people, his body? And if you have taken a wrong turning, then to go forward does not get you any nearer. If you are on the wrong road, progress means doing an about turn and walking back to the right road. And in that case, the man who turns back soonest is the most progressive man. So if we want to make progress in our life, sometimes we have to stop going toward Emmaus when we encounter Jesus and go uh, encounter Jesus and go back to where he said to go and that is with the community of worshipers. There is nothing progressive about being pig-headed and refusing to admit a mistake. And I think if you look at the present state of the world, it's pretty plain that humanity has been making some big mistake. We're on the wrong road. And if that is so, we must go back. Going back is the quickest way on. So guys, for today, the Lord is just saying that stop looking for the living among the dead. Quit going to the empty tombs. Acknowledge what they are that they don't satisfy. And then come back, not only to the risen one, the savior of our souls, the repentance and faith, but come back to his body as well, to the people of God as we regather for worship. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your word. We thank you for the gift of your word made flesh. And we thank you for the gift of the church, the body of believers that you have bought by your blood, that you have sanctified by your blood. And now you've connected us by your spirit. Um, Lord, we pray that the church would be uh, amazing to us once again. Lord, we begin to love you and love your church again as well. In Jesus' name, amen. So guys, if you want to pray with somebody, um, if you want to get some freedom from these empty tombs that you keep going back to to try to find uh, the living God, please cl click that prayer button. And if you've never actually come to Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you're still separated from your maker, please pray with somebody today. We'd love to help you do that. And now, church, let's go back into a time of worship. Welcome back, Second City. We just ask that in this second set of worship, uh, that you would just reflect on that message. Uh, if the Lord is speaking to you, uh, feel free to just pray to Him. Just take a break and pray to Him. Reach out to Him. He is listening. Uh, feel free to join in with us as well and worship Him recognition of how awesome our God is. Before the throne of God above, I have a strong and perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and pleads for me. My name is graven on his hands. My name is written on his heart. I know that while in heaven he stands, no tongue can bid me thence depart. No tongue can bid me thence depart. When Satan tempts me, despair and tells me of the guilt within upward I look and see him there who made an end of all my sin because a sinless Savior died my sinful soul is counted free for God the justice Satisfied to look on him and pardon me, to look on him and pardon me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the
Holding there the risen lamb My perfect spotless righteousness The great unchangeable I am The King of glory and of grace One in himself I cannot die My soul is purchased by his blood, my life is hid with Christ on high, with Christ my Savior and my God, with Christ my Savior and my God. sorrows lamb of god by his own betrayed the sin of man and wrath of god has been on jesus name silent as he stood precious blood that my Jesus spilled. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me. Whom the sun sets free, who is this free indeed? Now my debt is paid, it is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus
the stone is rolled away behold the empty tomb hallelujah god be praised he's risen from the grave oh that rugged cross my salvation and honor unto Thee. All right, we hope that you were encouraged by that last worship set and once again are strengthened by the knowledge of God's great love for you. Now, we're going to continue to talk about these things in our community groups throughout this week. So if you've not yet found one, please go do, do visit our website where you can find both virtual and in-person options. In addition to that, if there's any way that we can stand with you today or in the future, let us know because we'll be praying for you this week. Do think about how you can share this link so that others might be encouraged by the grace of God. And please do invite family members, friends, co-workers, and the like with you to service next week so they can also hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Until then, God bless you and have a wonderful week in the Lord.